From mortgages in the US to pensions in the UK, global mis-selling scandals have cost private investors and the financial industry billions. And in the wake of the worst financial crisis in 100 years, the companies that provide financial advice and sell products are having a hard time regaining the trust of their clients. There's an old Wall Street story that goes like this. A young man arrives for his first day at a successful brokerage firm and is shown around the offices and then taken outside to admire the beautiful yachts that belong to the brokers. This, he says, is so impressive. But where are all the customers' yachts? New rules are about to be introduced in the UK to clean up the way that financial products are sold by putting a stop to sales based on commissions and forcing advisors to be upfront about how much they charge. I don't think there's anything generically wrong with the concept of commission. It's simply that on investment products, the products themselves are quite confusing and people don't really realise how much they're actually paying. Because, of course, the commission that these advisors are getting is coming straight out of the investments that the individuals are making. It doesn't come from some kind of well of money that the insurance company or fund manager has got put aside. And it's not just in the UK that private investors are being sold financial products that pay out commissions to advisors. In the vast majority of countries around the world, financial advisors get paid on commission. And in Southeast Asia, for instance, they're very, very commission-driven models. There's no doubt that regulators in Europe and in North America and Australia are looking at this whole issue. And I'd be quite surprised if fees didn't come in as a replacement to commission in most kind of developed countries over the next few years. Many investors mistakenly assume that the advice they receive is free, and some may be unwilling to pay once they realise how much it costs them. Patrick Connolly of advice firm AWD Chase Devere says the industry is anxious. I think a lot of firms of financial advisors are going to struggle. Uh, a lot of firms are losing money in the current environment and making the transition to a fee-based model is going to be difficult. Uh, we're not going to see the, first, the full fallout of that in January and you'll see that over the next 12 months and beyond. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if many firms of advisors and many individual advisors continue to leave the industry. Andrew Tyree, head of the Treasury Select Committee, is concerned about the effect the ban will have and asked the Financial Services Authority to delay its introduction by a year. We were worried that some consumers might walk away and then not buy product that would be beneficial to them and they'd end up losing out on services. And we were also worried that some high quality people might leave the industry. Mr Tyree's request was turned down by the FSA, but he remains worried about the speed with which changes are being introduced. We'll be watching very carefully what happens and monitoring to see whether any of the concerns that we expressed um, come to pass. Of course, even if they d uh, don't, it doesn't mean to say that it might not have been a good idea to have a, a lead-in period of a year or so. Um, why take the risk? I've still not fully understood the logic of the FSA's position on that or the need to rush it, nor have I understood why they rushed ahead with the decision without just thinking about it for a while. Despite the best efforts of some MPs here in Westminster, next year's ban on commission will go ahead. Nobody knows exactly how private investors will react, and some believe it could leave millions without access to any financial advice. Instead, they think private investors will go directly to providers. That's why the next thing on the regulator to-do list is to look at how providers charge as well. Elaine Moore, Financial Times, London.